I'm out here live at the scene of where I'm going to be shooting a night lapse tonight. I'm going to show you the steps of how I set up each piece of equipment for this night lapse. And then I'm going to go on in the studio and show you all the best settings I use for the night lapse. So in order to do the night lapse, you're going to need three basic pieces of equipment. First of all, you're going to need your GoPro Hero 10. Secondly, you're going to need a tripod. You can use the shorty or you can use a standard tripod. There's a lot of different options. And third, you're going to need an external power pack. So I've got my tripod right here. I've got it all set up. I've got the uh, GoPro mount here on top of the switch plate. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to hook the GoPro on at the top here. We're going to fold out the feet on the GoPro. We're going to attach it to the mount. Then we're going to screw it on. Once you've finished attaching it, we're going to want to power it on, make sure everything's good to go. It's good to go in night lapse mode. Next thing you're going to want to do is make sure you adjust the angle of the camera to your liking. So in my case, I'm going to make sure I've got plenty of sky showing up up there. It's also a good idea to have some type of foreground subject. So in this case, I'm going to have some of those trees right there. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to plug in our external power supply. So if you see this right here, I've got the USB pass-through door that GoPro created. This USB pass-through door costs $19.99 and it replaces the default GoPro door. What this allows for is this allows you to plug in the USB-C cable right here while the camera still remains waterproof. That means if it thunderstorms, rains, or snows, or is just a heavy dew at night, your camera will not be harmed by keeping the door open. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to attach the power pack down here. So you'll see I've got a couple bungee cables here where I'm going to attach this power pack to the side of the tripod. Which, by the way, this power pack is also serving as my light right now. Once the power pack has been attached, we're going to plug in the USB-C cable. Once we've plugged in the USB-C cable, we're going to go around to the back here. We're going to confirm that it's providing power. You'll know it's providing power because you'll see the charge symbol on the battery there. Now, something I recommend trying before you do this is make sure that your external power pack is going to work with the battery still in the GoPro. Some external battery packs do power off if there's not something for them to continuously provide power to. Usually they'll power off after about 30 seconds. So I've tried a couple different brands and the Anchor one, which I have a link to below, I found that one tends to work best. And usually I can leave my battery in and it's going to keep working fine. But if you're unsure of that, you can take the battery out of the camera and then close the door and have it plugged in. And that way it will provide continuous power to the camera without the battery being in there. Once you've confirmed your setup is ready to go, it's time to start shooting that night lapse. And this is what the camera's going to do. I currently have it set to 30 for the shutter. It's going to do this all night until I come out in the morning and stop it. All right, we're going to leave this here and head back into the studio. Now that I'm back inside in a little bit better lighting and not looking like I'm shooting a horror flick, it's time to take a look at those best settings for night lapses. I'm going to go through each and every setting and I'm going to show you both the photo mode and the video mode. Both are options on here. The photo mode is going to be for you if you want to do a good bit of editing and get the very best results with it. The video mode is going to be if you want a simple night lapse that's ready to share right out of the camera with minimal or zero editing. Let's get started on those best settings. All right, first thing we're gonna do is power on that GoPro. After we powered it on, we're gonna make sure it's in time-lapse mode. Think down here at the bottom where it says night lapse, I'm gonna click on that. We're gonna go to the edit button right here. 
So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go through the photo mode. And then after I've gone through the photo mode, I'm gonna show you the video mode. Now, like I said before, the photo mode is preferred for maximum editing flexibility. And this is gonna give you a series of individual photos that you can then put together in a time lapse later on while editing. So first thing you wanna make sure of here is you wanna make sure format is set to photo. When you set it to photo, the lens option is gonna be grayed out because photo only has the wide option available. Next, you're gonna go over here to interval. You're gonna make sure that's set to auto. For shutter, this is gonna depend on what type of shooting scenario you have. For night lapses, you're either gonna use 30 seconds or 15 seconds for the shutter speed. Here's how you'll wanna make the determination. When there's no moon in the sky, you'll wanna have it at 30 seconds. That's gonna allow for maximum light to hit the shutter. And that's gonna allow you to capture the best stars and other celestial objects in the sky. When the moon is bright, in other words, if the moon is facing your GoPro or directly above the GoPro, you'll wanna set 15 seconds for the shutter speed. And finally, if the moon is at your back or setting, you're gonna to wanna to set 30 seconds. Next setting, for the output, I highly recommend RAW. RAW is gonna give you the maximum flexibility while editing, and you're also gonna get a JPEG alongside the RAW. If you do only in standard output, you're only gonna get that JPEG file, and you're not gonna get the GPR, which is GoPro's version of a RAW file. So you really have nothing to lose with that. Just make sure you have a large enough micro SD card. I recommend having at least 128 gigabytes. I personally use a 512 gigabyte SanDisk Extreme micro SD card. Next setting here for scheduled capture, keep that off. If you wanted to, you could schedule the time for when you want your night lapse to start. But in this case, I just wanna get my camera out there in the field and start it when I'm ready to go. For duration, I recommend setting no limit. And generally, I'm going to get back to my camera in the morning when I'm ready to stop the night lapse. So I keep that at no limit. If you wanted to set a limit, you could. There's a lot of different options here. It goes all the way up to three hours. But three hours for a night lapse at a 30 second shutter speed, which means 30 seconds between each photo, would actually not be very long of a night lapse. For the timer, I recommend keeping that off. For the zoom, that's gonna be grayed out and not an option. Under ProTune, this is where you're gonna to wanna to adjust several settings. For white balance for a night lapse, I generally recommend having it at 3200K or 4000K. 4000K is usually my favorite for night lapses and I recommend using that. You of course can always change the white balance later on when you're editing your photos. It just makes it easier to have it set to one consistent white balance. I don't recommend setting it to auto. That can make things a little bit more difficult when editing later on. So just like the shutter options, the ISO min and max are also going to depend on what type of lighting situation you have in the sky. When there is no moon in the sky, you're gonna to wanna to set the ISO min and ISO max to 1600 for both of these. When there is a moon in the sky and it's bright, you're gonna to wanna to set the ISO min and max at 800. And finally, when there is a moon in the sky but it's at your back or it's setting, you're also gonna want the ISO min or max at 800. So basically the only time you're gonna have that at 1600 is gonna be when there is no moon in the sky. For sharpness, you're gonna to wanna to keep that low and for color, you're gonna to wanna to keep that flat. Having sharpness low and color flat is gonna give you maximum flexibility later on when you're editing these photos. And finally, the shortcuts down here, you wanna keep those as they are. That does not apply to this. Next, we're gonna go through the video mode. So we're gonna go back up here to the top and here where it says format, you're gonna change it from photo to video. This is now gonna offer you resolution options. You definitely wanna shoot this in 4K. You could do 4K four x three if you want to. That's gonna give you a little bit taller frame, but I generally stick with 4K 16 by nine because then it's more ready to share as soon as you're done. Assuming that you'll want to do minimal editing on this. For the lens, you do have a couple options. You can do wide, you can do linear, or you can do narrow but there's really no good reason to not use wide on this. You wanna capture as much of that sky as you can. 
For interval, you're gonna to wanna to keep that at auto. For shutter, you're gonna to wanna to use the same type of situation as before. If there is no moon in the sky, you wanna set the shutter to 30 seconds. If there is a moon in the sky and it's bright, you're gonna to wanna to set it to 15 seconds. And if the moon is at your back or setting, you're gonna to wanna to keep it at 30 seconds. For scheduled capture, you're gonna to wanna to keep that off. For duration, you're gonna to wanna to set that to no limit. For timer here, you're gonna to wanna to set that to off. And zoom, you're gonna to wanna to keep that at the default of one. Under protune, you're gonna to wanna to change the bit rate to high. Under white balance, again, I recommend setting that to 3200 or 4000. 4000 is my favorite for that, especially if you're gonna do a no edit video lapse. For the ISO min, you're gonna set that to 1600 if there is no moon in the sky. And if there is a moon in the sky or if the moon is at your back in setting, you're gonna to wanna to put that at 800. For the sharpness, we're gonna set that to low. For night lapses, I do not recommend having sharpness anything but low for that setting. Otherwise, you could get a lot of that noise in the footage getting highlighted and brought out, and that can look pretty bad when dealing with a night lapse. For the color, you have a couple options, and really for the color, it just depends on if you're gonna edit at all later on. With this new color mode of natural, I generally recommend keeping it at natural for the night lapses. It's going to look the most natural. If you want a little bit more color brought out, you could go to vibrant down here, and if you're gonna edit this later on, I would select flat. But generally, I'm assuming you're going to shoot this and do very little to no editing since it's video mode. So I would recommend keeping it set at natural for that. And for the shortcuts down here, those will not apply for this situation. That's a run through of all my best night lapse settings for the GoPro Hero 10 Black. Getting good footage on the GoPro Hero 10 Black is the first step in the night lapse process. The critical second step is editing especially if you did the photo mode. So I'm in the process of working on a video that shows you step-by-step step how I edit night lapses from the photo mode. As soon as I have that video finished, I will publish it so that you can see exactly what my workflow is as this will assist you with editing night lapses. I promise it's not as complicated as it may sound and I'll show you everything I do step-by-step step with the editing process. Until we talk again, happy night lapsing.